Hey everybody. So uh, yesterday I had a really cool opportunity where the Huntington Matters Community Forum on Facebook asked me if I would do a write-up on the meaning of Easter to be posted to their forum. It's over 10,000 people. I thought it was a great opportunity to uh, spread some good news and I was excited to do it. And uh, Pastor Jim asked me if I would read you um, what I wrote up and I'm going to do that in a minute. But first I'm going to talk about something that happened. Um, so somebody commented, you know, that uh, Easter isn't a Christian holiday at all. It is a pagan holiday that uh, comes from worshiping the goddess Ishtar, a uh, goddess of fertility, thus the eggs and everything else. And, um, and uh, I wanted to address that because it kind of comes up every year in social media. And I, I understand where people are, are coming from it. And it's not that there isn't uh, truth in that criticism. Um, I, I think there is some, some truth to it, and it's, it's worth uh, addressing. This isn't just people trying to uh, rain on our parade. But, you know, when we talk about Christianity, I like to say that we are, it's very important for us to remember that we are part of a 2,000-year line of believers, unbroken. Um, and we've had our, our sects and our differences and the things we argue about, but ultimately, uh, follow of Christ, followers of Christ that are um, indwelled by the Holy Spirit and, and uh, believe in the authority of the Bible, we go back 2,000 years. Well, the celebration of Easter doesn't go back quite that far. It goes back only about 1,900 of those years uh, for the church. Um, and I think it's a great uh, tradition that is worth uh, continuing. So uh, when I was in Moody Bible Institute, I had a great psychology class. And at the beginning of the class, the professor addressed the idea of, you know, should Christians even be studying psychology? It's a secular discipline that doesn't really acknowledge the spiritual world. Uh, he referenced Exodus chapter 3, verses 21 and 22, the passage where God tells the Israelites to plunder the Egyptians, to take their bounty, much of it that had been gotten uh, wrongly through ill-gotten gain from the breaking the backs of the Israelite slaves, and to put it to good use for God's glory and the prosperity of his people. Um, my professor told us Christians that we were not to reject psychology because all truth is God's truth. And I would certainly affirm that. Nor were we to idolize psychology and believe it holds all the answers, as it is much better for diagnosing problems than actually resolving them. Um, Instead, we were told to co-opt the truth of psychology uh, contained in the secular discipline and use it to understand people and their problems and then to address those problems with grace and the truth of God's word and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit and the true and living God. So we can easily apply the concept of plundering the Egyptians to Christian holidays. Now, the word holiday is just a transliteration of two words, holy day. Uh, it's a secular, secularization of, uh, of the term holy day. And Easter is a holy day for us. Um, and most of the holidays we celebrate do have pagan roots that inform their timing and their rituals. So I ask this question. Is the birth of our Savior a worthy thing to focus on and commemorate? How about his sacrifice on the cross and the difference it makes for us? How about his resurrection and conquering of death and the hope and new life it gives us? I can't think of anything better to focus on and celebrate. I think maybe the ancient emperors that who decided to convert these holidays understood, understood human beings better than we give them credit for, uh, even if it wasn't consciously. We are all wired to worship, wired to celebrate, and wired to try and fill the emptiness that we feel, feel inside. It's all a question of what or who you worship, celebrate, and look to for fulfillment. So if what happened was you had these holidays that uh, were celebrating things that were pagan and ungodly and immoral 
and evil and represented a worldview that uh, was um, without God or antagonistic to God. And you turn that and flip it on its head and turn it into a day that is all about honoring the truth of God and celebrating uh, what he has has done. Is that a good thing? That's my question uh, to you. Turning from celebrating temporal things to things of eternal consequence is wonderful. And directing the worship of people from created things to the creator behind them is great. So I say, do you got any more pagan holidays we can turn on their heads? Because I would do it. He is risen. If you prefer to call Easter Resurrection Day instead, instead, go for it. The important thing is not the name of the holiday or its origins. It is the focus on the risen Savior. So now I'm going to read you what uh, I posted yesterday. And um, this is kind of what Easter means uh, to us. Easter is the holy day that Christians celebrate the rec- resurrection of Jesus. The earliest evidence we have of it being celebrated is in correspondence between two church leaders from 154 A.D. Very early in terms of church history, in terms of what's survived. And it seems like from that correspondence that it was something that had been going on for quite a while and, uh, and was uh, an accepted practice that, um, that was just par for the course by 154 A.D. It is no coincidence that Easter occurs around the same time as Passover because Jesus was crucified during Passover. Remember, the Last Supper was a Passover Seder. Christians believe that Jesus was the ultimate Passover lamb, that just as the blood of the Passover lamb on their doorposts protected the Israelites from God's judgment and rescued them, the blood of Jesus shed on the cross rescues those who believe in him and receive him. Upon seeing Jesus, John the Baptist referred to Jesus prophetically as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. The Apostle Paul refers to Jesus directly as our Passover lamb in 1 Corinthians. And the book of Hebrews refers to Jesus as the sacrifice made once for all. Christians believe that the death of Christ was a sacrifice to pay for the sins of the world so that people could be reconciled to God. We also believe that Jesus rose from the dead And that is the key to us having hope for the future and power and confidence for living day to day. In fact, the apostles thought the resurrection was so critical that Paul wrote this. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. Why did Paul believe that? The resurrection accomplishes several critical things. First, it validates who Jesus was and is. Paul said this in Romans He was declared to be the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Second, it confirms Jesus' sacrifice was acceptable and effective. Pastor Jim gave me that that one to throw in. I said, oh, that's good. That needs to be in there. Uh, John wrote, he himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, that is, pays for our sins. And not only for our sins, but the sins of all the world. It paves the road, thirdly, it paves the road for believers to experience their own resurrection. Uh, Jesus' resurrection is what gives us hope that we're going to see Gabby again. Um, Paul calls Jesus the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. That means the first, the first of those who have died and been resurrected. Next, it secures the believer's position before God as loved and safe. Hebrews says Jesus is our permanent priest who is able to save, Uh, the word save is also, it means rescue or deliver. We tend to Christianize that word a little, so I don't like to use it as much. I like using the word rescue because it makes us think about what's being talked about there. It's able to rescue us completely, uh, those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus is always advocating on our behalf. We have a lawyer that's never lost a case and is never going to be off the job for us. Lastly, it displays the extent of the power that is at work in, on, and through believers. That is, it demonstrates the power of the Holy Spirit. 
In Romans, Paul says, the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. There are some who doubt Jesus' resurrection. I think one of the most compelling reasons to believe was the behavior of his closest followers after the events of Holy Week. They not only claim to have witnessed the empty tomb and the angel proclaiming him risen, they claim to have spent time with the resurrected Christ himself over a period of weeks. After that, they dedicated their whole lives to proclaiming Jesus as God come in the flesh to save us, now risen and Lord of all. In time, they were persecuted terribly for their message, for that message. Eventually, most of them were martyred in awful ways, yet they never wavered from what they said they witnessed in the decades after those events. There was no earthly reason for them to live and die for something they were making up. The simple explanation is that they actually experienced what they said they did, and that they were so thoroughly convinced of Jesus' resurrection that they were willing to suffer and die for him, believing that they would rejoin him in glory. And I hope, uh, I hope you believe that too. As I said, we're a part of a 2,000-year line of believers that connects back to those apostles. And, I, uh, and it says in Peter, and Paul said it too, our, we have the same faith they did, the same uh, faith that was given to them, the same foundation that comes from believing and receiving Christ is ours, that was theirs. And I hope that we can join them in saying that we would uh, uh, suffer and die for what we believe because we know that this life is the Shadowlands and Jesus' resurrection was the first fruits and we are going to join him in glory someday. So happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. I hope you had a great one. Uh, I, I know it was a little weird, um, but uh, I hope you remembered our Savior and celebrated the fact that he is alive, alive, alive forevermore. Okay, love you all. See you soon.